One of the secrets of the Beatles' success as recording artists was producer George Martin. Now, long before George Martin had met the Beatles, he was a very successful producer in England. He worked for Parlophone Records, and he was known as one of the more experimental producers in England. He worked with lots of different types of artists, including a lot of comedians. And together with his engineering staff, he developed several techniques to do different things with tape and with recording technology that he brought in to the Beatles. One of these things that he loved to use was something he called wind-up piano. And what that was was recording a piano with the tape player running at half speed and playing the piano part an octave lower. So when you sped up the tape recorder to normal speed, the part that you played was transposed up an octave, and of course it sounded faster. Now Martin used this technique on the very first Beatles album, Please Please Me, on a song that Lennon and McCartney had written called Misery. George Harrison had played this guitar figure. And Martin thought it would be cool to double that with the piano. But Martin played the piano an octave lower and with the tape player running at half speed. Now, when you sped up that piano part and combined it with George's guitar, it sounded like this. Martin used the same wind-up piano technique again on A Hard Day's Night, the title song, where George Harrison played a guitar solo, half speed, and Martin doubled him on piano, half speed. Tape player running half speed, both George Martin and George Harrison playing their parts at half tempo. And then when you sped up the tape recorder, everything was transposed up an octave. Here's how that sounds. He used the wind-up piano technique again on the song In My Life from 1965's Rubber Soul. In this case, he played the piano an octave lower, and when it was sped up, it sounded a little bit like a harpsichord. White Album Sessions of 1968, the Beatles weren't doing a lot of experimental stuff in the studio. They were done with all that psychedelic stuff, but they still had room for George Martin's wind-up piano on the song Rocky Raccoon, which started out sounding like this. sped it up, it sounded like this. On 1969's Abbey Road, Paul's composition, You Never Give Me Your Money, also features wind-up piano. This time, Paul plays the boogie-woogie part at half speed, an octave lower, and then it is sped up when the tape player goes to normal speed. Here's how it sounded when Paul played it. When you sped it up, it sounded like this. George Martin and his engineering staff at EMI Studios helped the Beatles a lot by making their records sound great, but they also brought a lot of techniques that they learned long before the Beatles ever stepped foot into EMI Studios. And one of those techniques was used from the Beatles' first album all the way through to their last, and that was George Martin's favorite, Wind Up Piano. <laughs> 